So here's two web data grids. One uh, you can drag from this handle down into the destination, and uh, there you have it. So if you keep dragging the rows, it'll populate the destination grid. And once the rows are completely gone from the source grid, that grid disappears. So what this does is it harnesses our web drag and drop framework as well as the web data grid. So let me go ahead and show you how it's done. Here we are in Visual Studio with a brand new web form. Nothing's been added to it yet. And so let's start by adding in a script manager. So we'll throw that on there. And then we'll also be using two web data grids. So we'll put one on and another. So I'm going to drop into the source and we'll do a couple things. I like small IDs on my controls, so we'll do that. This web data grid will be the WDG source and the next one will be WDG destination. And I want to get rid of these size uh, attributes here. So that gives us a couple web data grids. Now one of the first things we need to do is customize the script manager. We need to be able to bring in our script references for the drag and drop framework. So here's the script reference for the Infragistics uh, 9.1 drag and drop framework. And what I'm going to do here is scroll across the screen here and you can just press pause if you need to copy it down for your application. So the next thing we need to do is customize the markup for our grid. So let's start with the source here. We're going to handle uh, the columns ourselves. We want to set auto generate columns equal to false. And then instead of using this, I'm going to paste in some column information. And I'll just fix the formatting real quick. So you notice here we've got a, uh, a template column. And all we're doing is putting in an anchor tag. And we're giving it an ID of source dash and then the primary key value of each one of the, the data objects that comes in. So we're just sticking the drag, we're dragging there. You could put an image, you could do whatever you want. After that, we've just got regular bound fields. So we're looking for the first name and the last name and obviously the data field name and the key need to be set up correctly as well. For the destination data grid, uh, it's very much the same. It's basically th uh, the same setup, except we're not using any of the drag handles. So we just need auto generate uh, columns to false here. And again, you can see that we've got the bound columns for the first name and the last name. So now that we have those, let's go ahead and populate them with some data. So what I'll be using to provide data for the grids is the person repository. It inherits from the fake repository class, which basically generates fake data for us and persists it in the session while we're doing this. So we don't have to worry about handling any databases. So um, we'll create a, a private instance of this variable. We'll call this one source, and the next one will be destination. Now on page load, there's just a couple things that we need to do. This is completely for this demonstration's purposes. You'll have other strategies for dealing with this when you're implementing in your application. Um, but I'm going to create a new instance of uh, the source, and um, I'm just passing in uh, a persistence key so it knows how to find it when it's pulling it out of session. So this will just be source and then uh, so that gives us two two different lists to work with of the same type. And the next thing I'm going to do is run a method that will allow us to generate some fake data. And uh, let me just paste this in here real quick. So all that's happening is that it's looking at our, our, our fake repository and looking to see if we have any items. If it's not, then it's inserting some objects for us. Basically, the, all of the source um, names start with a J, and all of the destination names start with an S. So you can kind of tell them apart on the screen when we're looking at them. Again, this is demo code. This will just go away when you start implementing in your own uh, solutions. So uh, at this point, we'll just call that method add fake data. Now, I'm going to depart from something that you might normally do. You, maybe what you might do at this point is add the data source or fill the data source properties of your web data grids and call data bind. I don't want to do it in page load. I want to defer that to later in the page event lifecycle, and I want to do it on page pre-render. And the reason for that is 
is because if you if you remember the page event lifecycle, load happens first, and then any of the events that are fired from controls that are on the page, those all fire next, and then at the end, the pre-render was one of the last events to fire. So this method here will allow us to only data bind to our controls once all of the manipulation has been done. So from here what we can do is uh, go to the web data grid source and set the data source and then we'll call data bind. And lastly what we'll do is set its visibility based on whether or not it has any rows. And this one line here is what handles um, hiding the, the grid when all of the rows have been dragged out of it. So that's the source, and then we also need the destination. So basically the same thing. Okay, so let's check it out and make sure that we have grids with some data in it. Perfect, okay. So you can see we haven't set up drag and drop behavior yet, that's one of the next things that we need to do. So let's go back up to our markup. And at this point, what we want to do is start writing some of the JavaScript. So I'm going to put this down at the bottom of the page because we'll use uh, ASP.NET Ajax to, load, to hook into the load of the page. So to begin, what I want to do is uh, declare a variable for our drag and drop object. So we'll use this instance throughout some of the, the functions that we create. And then we'll take a look at uh, sys application add load. And what we want to do is create the handler for app loaded. And then we can come down here and create the function app loaded. So what, what's, what's going to happen in this function is we'll instantiate the drag and drop behavior. And then we'll set some things up. So we want to uh, add a drop handler. So when something is dropped on the page, we have a, a function to, to run some code. So what we're going to do is, is return up a common delimited list of the primary key values that are in our data objects. And what that will allow us to do is loop through each one of those items. Because if you remember up in the grid, those IDs are what we used right here in order to, to identify the anchor tag. Well, we'll return up that list so we can loop through them in JavaScript and then we, we, we know what we're going to be finding on the page. So uh, let's go ahead and start by just uh, getting some things set up. So we've got the drag and drop behavior. We want to set that in equal to a new instance of the IG drag and drop behavior. So that, that will be kind of the manager for everything that we do. And then we'll create a, a drop handler. Go to the get events and add a drop handler. So we'll just call this function drop. And just to keep everything clear, so what we're doing is creating a function called drop. And now that that's stubbed out, we'll go on and, and we'll add some more to that in just a second. So the next thing that we want to do is create uh, an array for our IDs. So we need something here that will split based off of a comma. So at this point, what we need to do is put that list in there. So let's come back to our code behind. And what I want to do is create a, a property. And this will simply be called the ID list. And so what we'll do is return the source IDs. So from our source repository, we want to get the list of all the IDs that are selected. So let's simply come in here and say this source. And I have a, a method already created here that basically goes through each one of the items and whatever delimiter we pass in, it will return that string for us. So at this point, we're returning up a common delimited string of all the primary key values coming from our, our rep repository. In your case, you may go about this a similar fashion or some other way, but that basically gives us known values to, to loop through when we're up in the UI. So from here, all we need to do is access that list. And so now when the page renders, it will be a, a, a common delimited list of the IDs. So once we have those IDs, what we want to do is loop through them. And I'm going to create a variable here for each one of the items we're looking at. This is important because as you begin to drag items out of the source grid, 
you're still going to have the IDs up in this list because based off of an Ajax uh, call that we're going to be making, this list will not change. So when we go and try to find them on the page, if it returns null, then we don't want to do anything. If we have an instance of an item, then we'll go ahead and, and run the logic. So we'll do a get. And the key we're using is source, dash, and then the ID. So if this item is not null, then what we can do is go to our drag and drop framework and add a source element. And so now we're passing in an instance of that drag handler. So that's basically the word drag that you saw within the, the row. And we want to pass in true as well. So once we've gone through each one of those, uh, that has everything set up. So the, the final thing that we need to do is add a target element. So let's go to our, our behavior again, add a target element. And basically we just need to pass in an instance of something that you can drop to. So we'll do a get on drop destination. So to create something that matches the drop destination, we'll come back up to our markup and just wrap our, our destination data grid within a div. So what that does is as you're dropping, you can drop it anywhere within the, the grid and things will work as you want it to. Now, once you've dropped, what we want to do is initiate a post back and allow the code behind to manage the data and just rebind the grids with what's been changed. So one of the things that we have to do is use a, a little bit of a trick that's uh, commonly used within ASP.NET um, that allows you to initiate a post back with JavaScript. So one of the things that you have to do is create a control on the page that we're eventually going to hide from the user using style sheets. And what that does is registers all of the, the client information and the JavaScript that we need in order to do a post back. But we're going to do it programmatically through JavaScript rather than waiting for someone to click on a, a button. So to create that hook that we need, I'm going to come right over here and after our div, create a link button. I'm going to call this person. And I don't want to pass in any text. And let's do run it server. Now for the on click, it's going to be a little weird and it's either going to be weird here or in the code behind, but it seems to make more sense to keep it consistent in the code behind. I want it to run the person drop method. So what we'll do is use the hooks that this link button creates for us in order to run a method on the code behind when the item is dropped on the grid. So the other, only other thing we want in order to hide it from the user for sure is to come up and create a style here. And I'll just call this hide, and we'll say display none. So now we can do CSS class hide. So now no one will see it on the page. So in the code behind, what we want to do is have a function or a method called person drop and within here all we need to do is the data management. So before we can implement any of that code though we need to know the ID of the item that we're looking at. So the easiest way to do that is to create a hidden input field that will contain the primary key value or the ID of the item that we're looking at. So let's go back to the markup and we'll come up to right here and we'll create that, that hidden input. And uh, we'll just call this person ID because that's what will be tucked in here. And if I make this run at server, then I will have access to it in the code behind. So in JavaScript, what we'll do is fill this input element with the information that we need. And so we know that we'll have it. Let's come back down and we can start doing our server processing with it. So the first thing we need to do, it's going to come in as a string. We have to convert it to an integer. So what we can do is take a look and see if it parses as an integer, then uh, things will go well for us. And then at this point, if we have an ID, 
that's greater than zero, then we'll retrieve the person object from our repository. So we'll do a get by ID, passing in the ID. Now we have an instance of the person. We can remove it from the source. and we can add it to the destination. So the last piece that we need is the JavaScript to make the, the drop behavior happen. So let's come back over to the JavaScript and we can put that in there. So to start with, what we need is a reference to the source item that's been dropped. So let's create a variable for that. We're going to take a look at the event args and we're going to do get manager. And this is the drag and drop manager. Then we want to find the source. And from there, we want to look at the source element. So now we have a reference to the instance of the item that we just dropped. And then we need to find its ID. Now, if you remember, the, the, the ID attribute of this element has source dash ID. So we'll just take a look at the source. We'll take a look at its ID element, and then we'll split it based off of the dash. And then from there, we just want index one. So basically, we just created a, a simple array, and we're taking the second part of it, which is the ID itself or the, the, the primary key value. So once we have the ID, what we need to do is basically tuck it away in that hidden input. So from here, what we can do is uh, do a get. We'll sit. And we'll just flesh this out first. Uh, value equals ID. And so the, the client ID that we're looking for would be uh, person ID dot client ID. Now that the ID has been prepared to send back to the server, all we need to do is post back. So we'll do do post back. And we'll tell it that the initiating control is the person control. And at this point, we should be able to run it and see how it looks. So here's our two grids. We can drag from one to the other. You can see this is a drop destination. When I let go, we have a nice uh, Ajax updating. We can keep dragging. And as soon as we're out of items in that top grid, it goes away. So I know your approach will probably be different on how you handle the data and do some of these other things, but this gives you a good idea of how you can access the items within the grid and do the processing in the background. So I hope you found this useful. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.